Hi everyone, uh, my name is Andrea Johnson and it's really a privilege to be with you today and to share with you a little bit about my research titled, I've titled today, What Does Quality of Life Mean for Adolescents Living with Advanced Cancer? So I'd like us to go back in time and back to being an adolescent. What were your goals, your hopes? What was meaningful to you? These are the wonderings that fuel my postdoctoral research, but with adolescents living with advanced cancer. So this is cancer that is difficult to treat and difficult to cure. What matters to this group of young people as they live with advancing disease, what's most important to them in this context? So adolescents with cancer are recognized globally as a distinct group of cancer patients. They have much lower rates of survival compared to both children and adults diagnosed with cancer. And they also experience significant psychosocial challenges following a diagnosis of cancer due to this really complex intersection between their physical and psychosocial development with a diagnosis of a life-threatening disease. And this intersection, complain, this intersection creates many numerous and complex needs for this population that adolescents report are often largely unmet by healthcare providers. And so for all of these reasons, this patient population in oncology um, is considered to have significant vulnerabilities. So if their cancer becomes advanced, when they're living with cancer that's difficult to treat, these vulnerabilities become exasperated. Sadly, up to 40% of adolescents will not survive a diagnosis of cancer, and they will live with advanced cancer. This means that a significant number of adolescents will access palliative care. This is specialized health care that's designed to enhance quality of life, enhance patient well-being, um, and to uh, alleviate holistic suffering. However, despite the recognized uh, vulnerabilities for this patient group that I've already shared with you uh, a moment ago, there's an equally significant uh, gaps in their palliative care and a lack of palliative care guidance on kind of age and developmentally aligned ways to best care for this population of young people. Specifically, palliative care is committed to enhancing quality of life for patients, but we don't know what the meaning of quality of life is for adolescents living with advanced cancer. Without knowing what it means, it's very difficult to know how to enhance it. So my postdoctoral research really centers around quality of life. And so what do we mean by the term quality of life? Um, quality of life is not a term where there's widely agreed, um, wide agreement on the definition, but a definition that's often invoked is the one by the World Health Organization um, that states quality of life is an individual's perception of their position in the context of the, of the culture and value systems in which they live and in relation to their goals, expectations, standards, and concerns. So my research is really focused on exploring and understanding the meaning of quality of life for adolescents living with advanced cancer. Essentially, I have two goals. The first is to develop, to develop a conceptual framework of quality of life for adolescents living with advanced cancer. So really just a comprehensive conceptual understanding of what's meaningful and important to this very vulnerable population during this period of time. And then secondly, to use this conceptual understanding to develop a patient reported outcome measure, a PROM, which is just another term for a patient questionnaire that we use in clinical practice with patients that would, uh, uh, my goal is to develop one that accurately assesses uh, their quality of life and that can be used in, in research and practice. So when I, the initial part of this research, I looked at all PROMs that have been used um, with adolescents with cancer and found that there were none that were specifically de developed for adolescents living with advanced cancer. I then went to the literature and I began to look at how quality of life is conceptualized for this population of young people. And I came upon two realizations. So one, there wasn't a conceptualization um, of quality of life developed for, again, this very vulnerable population, um, and so confirmed that we were on the right track with this research. Um, and the second realization was that any quality of life conceptualization really needed to be informed by the voices and perspectives of adolescents living with advanced cancer, not their parents and their healthcare providers. 
And the voices of their parents and healthcare providers are often the voices that we see in research and that are often solicited in clinical practice with this population. I also went to um, our Adolescent Young Adult Research Advisory Council I've created for this project and began to um, speak with them, a group of young people recently treated for cancer, about their experiences with quality of life and began to really marinate kind of in the voice, their voices of what they had to tell me about what quality of life meant to them living with cancer. And then when I began to really formally begin thinking about how might we begin to conceptualize quality of life for this population, um, we conducted a study uh, using social media created by adolescents living with advanced cancer to begin to think about how they, um, what's important and meaningful in their lives living with advanced cancer. Social media um, in the study became a really important um, and successful way to find their voices. These voices are not easy to find. This is a patient population that is small in numbers, um, and they're also very difficult to recruit for different reasons. And so the use of social media really allowed us to um, value the goal, uh, one of our guiding goals of this research or values of this research, to always keep the voices of adolescents at the forefront. So to be included in this study, um, social media content needed to be created by adolescents ages 13 to 19 years old, the author of the content had to reference that they were living with incurable or advanced cancer, and the post had to reflect something important, uh, either positive or negative, to the adolescent's life while living with advanced cancer. And so this research um, led to the creation of our proposed developed concepts of quality of life that we believe are meaningful and relevant to adolescents living with advanced cancer. So these include health, lived body, emotional well being purpose and meaning, and preparation for end of life. These concepts are different from those of conceptual frameworks that are often applied in practice with adolescents with cancer, um, but that haven't been created from their voices and lived experiences. So the PEDS QL, this is a very popular uh, quality of life framework that's often used in practice with this population. You can see the concepts here physical functioning, emotional functioning, social functioning, and school functioning. Another example is a conceptual model of quality of life that was found to underlie most quality of life instruments that are used with this population. And you can see the concepts here, physical, psycho psychological, social, and general health. The differences between our proposed concepts of quality of life and those of the two frameworks I've just shown you may seem small, but in clinical practice with this population, they are large. They, they direct clinicians' attention and facilitate clinicians attending to what adolescents themselves have, have identified as important and meaningful to their lives. So for example, the PEDS-QL, one, one of the concepts is physical functioning, uh, which is how well the body functions. Um, in comparison to our uh, proposed domain of lived body, which really speaks to the subjective experiences of living within a sick body, which is what we heard a lot about through our social data, so social media data. And this begins to you know, highlight or hint at um, the potential mismatches between what parents and healthcare providers think is important to adolescents living with advanced cancer, um, what they think actually may be different from what adolescents with advanced cancer think themselves are most important to their quality of life. So next steps are to validate these concepts and to develop conceptual framework to develop a conceptual framework of quality of life with adolescents living with advanced cancer and adolescents will be recruited from different palliative care and pediatric oncology sites across Canada. Um, we will then develop items for a prom. We will then validate this prom, uh, validate the items for the prom again with adolescents living with advanced cancer and then we'll begin to conduct um, initial testing of this newly developed problem of quality of life for use with this population. There really is a pressing need to develop uh, both a conceptualization of quality of life for adolescents living with advanced cancer and also um, a valid way to measure their quality of life. As I referenced at the outset of my talk, um, the, there are significant gaps in the palliative care of this population of young people and they are very, a very difficult population to clinically care for. We stumble and we bumble with them, and it's often because we just don't really understand what they need. As a pediatric palliative care clinician myself, 
I have experienced personally and witnessed the complexity of trying to respond to need, the needs of these patients, a very vulnerable group of patients that are not well met or not well understood. And it's really our hope with this research that we'll equip clinicians to begin to consider what does quality of life mean for adolescents living with advanced cancer, and then working with adolescents to enhance their quality of life while living with cancer that's unlikely to be cured. Thank you so much. Thank you.